All right, and we are back. So, turns out, I goofed. It is a best of three. So we're going to be back with Abusement Park versus Clueless for game number two. Let's see what Abusement Park changes up this time. They're taking a very, very long time on their first ban, which is yeah. going to be his. They are first pick, so they do not have to ban the Maokai out. If they want it, they can take it. If they don't, be very surprised if they didn't, but they let Clueless have it again. So they did have some time to think. They're taking their time. They're trying to think through, what did we mess up on last time? How can we make our team comp better? You know, we, we saw what Clueless did. Do we want to take away some of those champions, or do we want to stick to our bands and try to pick something else away from them? So it's going to be very interesting to see what they decide to do here. Isn't the Karma Band still coming out? We see the Jarvan Band this time. Yep, so they aren't going to play Jarvan, it seems, and they don't want Clueless to have it. Jack's band, so Clue is sticking with the same band so far. Yeah, Opposite does play a very good Jack spot lane, so it is good to get that away from there. Still just taking their time. It's very good. I like to see a team come back in round two, and they really think like, okay, what did we mess up on? What did we leave open? What didn't we pick? What can we do to improve on our game this time? taking away the Zyra, and Clueless is going to ban the Maokai. They do not want that to be first picked. But Leona and Braum and Vi are still open and on the table in terms of frontline initiators and tanks. So let's see if they decide to actually pick one of those away. This is a very interesting draft, as there really aren't any good first pick, like, super OP champions in the draft. They opt for Pantheon mm. as their pick. But what's going to happen here is Clueless still get two champions that are on equal or stronger power if they ch if they decide to. Parkers cannot play Leona. He is generally their tank player. He is not the best at that champion. He generally opts to play Alistar. So if Blue Team knows this, they probably will be able to pick up Pantheon and Leona, which is a very, very strong combo lore-wise and in-game if they decide to. Yeah, Braum also being there as well as the tank pick if Clueless decides to pick up some heavy range poke if they decide to grab that Ezreal again on generic. Uh, Braum, again, can build full tank and Dominion. He's got those stats, he's got those steroids, he's got that super shield to put up. Uh, looks like Half is going to be taking that brand. Very, very good pick, and Generic is going to be taking the Vi. Excellent, excellent picks here. Vi definitely going to go to Bibapop. Brand more than likely going to go to Hafe Harden, because he, he's really known for that champion. He hasn't played it in a very long time, but they do have other brand players. Wolfer occasionally opts to take it into the bottom lane, and Parkers is a mage player at heart. He could also take it if the comm decides for it. Yeah, so the Leona and Braum are still on the table. They were not taken away. Let's see if Abusement decides to pick them up with their picks now. It would be a really great thing. Both Braum and uh, Pantheon and Leona and Pantheon go together very well. Pantheon is very good at proccing all of Leona's sunlight as well as, and it looks like they're, never mind, it's gonna be an Alistair. That is probably the out. best thing that they can do. Parker's thinking that he doesn't have, uh, they don't have an Alistar player and nobody would take it in the second round. They take Alistar from him. Parker has no good uh, tanks that he can play, that he personally can play, and then they could pick up one other champion. So I'm very, very, very proud of them for if they lock in this Alistar pick. This is probably the best thing that they could have done uh, against Clueless right now. And it looks like they are going to take it. Well, we do have Braum, we do have Leona. As you just said, though, Parkers is not very practiced on either of those. Uh, Mundo is still on the table as a good late-game tank. We saw 3v3 GG use him to great effect in all of their games. Um, not too many other incredibly viable tanks. I mean, Parkers probably would default to Blitzcrank, in my opinion. I believe that is a champion he would play right now, even though there's not really a good champion to pull into the team. Other than that, I don't see them playing another mate, uh, melee. They might opt to play a three range one melee comp, even though Vi is not particularly good in them. Alistar is a very, very good champion against Vi as well, and he doesn't really care about Brand as he has percentage reduction, and he doesn't tend to build the most health in the world. But these two picks are probably going to have Clueless thinking a very, very long time. I expect a Kog'Maw to come out, personally speaking, but I, I don't know who would play it. I could expect... I, I, I would think Parky would bring it up, but you have to be very careful picking melees or bruisers in general against that Alistair, because as soon as you try to go in, or when you're in the fray trying to get on things, Alistair just knocks you all up, and you're, you're sitting there not being able to do anything to the enemy team. Alistair is such a good anti-bruiser or anti-melee. And uh, we are going to have the Braum picked up, which is very good with that Ezreal. That is going to synchronize very, very well. 
Um, he's going to be able to get off lots of procs as soon as he starts spamming that out. Ezreal being able to Q auto attack or auto attack Q auto to get those stuns out for his team. Brand as well, using a lot of auto attacks. Vi as well, using a lot of auto attacks. So, this is a very, very interesting draft. This is the first time we're ever going to see Parker as his Braum in tournament. This is the first time we're going to see his Braum ever. He has played it a couple times. He said the champion is very easy to play. The champion has very extraordinarily long cooldowns, so you have to be very impactful with what you do on that champion. And they're going to opt to play Ezreal again, which is a pretty... That champion does not chew through an Alistar very, very quickly. So this game should have much longer fights than before. The brand is probably going to be very uncontested, as we do not see an assassin being picked. This is going to be a very... Uh, you're going to have your front line, and you're going to have your back line. And whoever's back line you know, does more damage or kills the other front line first is probably going to win these team fights. It's going to be a lot more position based. If somebody is out of position, like if uh, the Ezreal gets swapped into the team and he gets chained CC and goes down, that's probably going to spell the end of a fight, as there's only really two good damage dealers. We have Vi, who's going to be uh, a good damage dealer, but she's not going to be able to survive into the late game. It's really, whoever, if the Pan it's going to come down to whoever the Vi or the Pantheon dies first, or if the as you are the Ur God dies first, it's going to be very, very interesting. As we see an Ash and a Cassio pickup. Yeah, the Ash pickup is really interesting. Um, often being regarded as probably one of the worst AD carries on Dominion because she's very low mobility. Uh, her positioning requirements in terms of AD carries is the highest on Dominion. She doesn't have the escapes. She doesn't have a hard CC. You know, she has to be very careful about where she is at all times. She has to be aware of the enemy's cooldowns at all times. Uh, if that Vi decides to jump in on her, she is most likely just going to blow up. Um, as you were just saying, it's going to come down to positioning. It's going to be even more important for the positioning on Abusement Park because that Ash is going to be very vital. If that goes down, which it can go down very quick, even faster than Ezreal, um, it's going to be quite a problem. So, I don't think the Ash is the most important thing right now. The Cassio pickup is very interesting because she's one of the highest damaging uh, backline mages, if not the highest damaging backline mage in the game. Um, the thing about having a backline with Alistair and Pantheon is they're going to be relatively safe. If the Vi decides to yellow into the backline, she's just going to get CC'd and die. She's not a very tanky champion, generally, when you built her. She's built primarily with maybe a health item or two, maybe a Hex Drinker here, maybe Ninja Tab by there, but she's not by any means uh, a, a very, very tanky bruiser into the late game where her passive shield gets very, very strong and has a lower cooldown. Um, we see the Skarna being picked up by Wolfer for bot lane, which is very interesting. It's a champion he picks generally against Cassio or against Urgot, and if he can get to them, it's very, very nice. If Urgot goes bottom lane, I think he should be able to handle that, and leaving the Ash to go top lane. Um, Ash and Cassio have a lot of poke. They should be able to outpoke Ezreal and Bran, so... We see a much more balanced comp, even though it's with a lot of different champions uh, coming out from blue team this time. They have poke, they have decent initiate. Alistar's not the best. He has uh, relatively short range, but he can still get in there, and his initiate is very, very good. It's like a mini Malphite combo, if you wish. And we have Ash Arrow initiate, which is not going to be very good against Braum, because he can just negate the Ash Arrow entirely with his shield. So it's, it's going to be very interesting how these team fights play out this game. Yeah, Braum will be able to stop the arrow from getting through. Um, the big thing is, he will still take the CC. That's the only downside of his shield, is he will eat any side effects of it, but he will negate all of the damage. Uh, the big thing that he'll be able to stop is Pantheon Spears flying through the air, going for those last kills on those low HP targets, or Cassio Fangs that are coming out. He'll be able to block all of those. So if someone gets poisoned, he can jump to him, pop up that shield, and all of those E's are just going to fizzle. Or rather, if he isn't poisoned himself, it's just going to hit him and completely be negated. Um, Wolfer, as you said, bringing out that Skarner, uh, he really enjoys that champion quite a bit. It just comes down to... Um, how he kind of fits now. He said after the recent changes, he didn't like him too much, but he still really tries to make him work. Uh, we're going to see how it turns out if that, that initial fight, if Cassio gets some good poison down and gets some good dots, it's going to be very, very bad for Clueless. At the same time, if Brand can get a really strong pillar while the enemy team is grouped, then that's going to be, you know, another big sway. So the poke is really going to come down to, again, the positioning of the team fighting at that initial windmill fight. The other thing that's going to be interesting is the Ash might go bottom against the Skarner. I don't know. Can Sk I don't. I have never played that matchup. I have not Skarner can get boot three. I, I would think a Skarner would be able to close on an Ash unless there is some incredible micro going on. The Ash also has flash, and the Skarner does not have a movement ability. So if Ash, 
I think Ash would be able to lane against Garner perfectly fine and get the farm and the level she needs to go into the mid game. And I think that'll bring a very interesting dynamic into the team because Vi can AD carries are very very weak in the bot lane to gankers. Vi could easily go down there. Asriel could, over, uh, could just jump over a wall with Essence Flux and get on to the Ash and kill it in the bottom lane. That's why I would think it would be either Urgot or Cassio. But if the Urgot opts to go top lane, I think blue team has a better team comp at least. Up until around level 15 is when the Vi gets, starts to get really scary and Vi can solo Cassio in the back line and she's going to start caring less and less about the CC that exists on blue team. Yeah, the, the really big thing to watch out for is um, that, I, I mean, really we need to just wait and see who, who's bot lane because that's kind of going to determine who, how these matchups are going to go top, how the fights are going to go. It, it's really just going to depend. All right, we're getting into our loading screen here. This is going to be round, or game two, I should say, excuse me, of Clueless versus Abusement Park. Clueless taking a very handy win over Abusement Park in the first game, getting a five cap, ending it at seven minutes, 30 seconds. Um, it is going to be interesting. It looks like they've swapped up their comp. It looks like they have a much better thought process going into this. They kind of thought they could maybe wing it a little bit more in the first game. But uh, it's going to be interesting. Although, you know, I do really want Abusement Park to win, because I love it when teams, we get to these loading screens, and you see, like, the silver borders, and then you see the enemy team with a bunch of plat and diamonds, and the silvers still win, because it's Dominion, and the borders don't really play too much, it just comes down to how good you are at Dominion. I mean, we've seen multiple games where there's bronze, silver, you know, gold players playing against diamond teams, and the bronze, silver, and gold players end up winning. They, they know the map, they know the mechanics, they know the matchups. It's just a completely different game. So it's very, very cool to see those kinds of things happen. There are a lot of skills that, you know, you can take from map to map and they'll be useful, but at the end of the day, each map, they're different. Uh, you, you do have uh, different core mechanics. Like the minion, you have to really be in tune with the fog of war. You have to understand, you know, when things can jump out, jump out at you, when they can't, and the amount of time it takes to get from point A to point B. Those are the very, very... Uh, basic and important things that that you should learn when you start playing. You should have a champion and know how to play it, and then you should immediately learn what can come out at me from where and why. And that will be your uh, foothold playing Dominion at a higher level than you currently do. Yeah, learning the map, look, learning to just look at the mini-map and realize, okay, they're not here, and just kind of getting a grasp of the whole situation and predicting where the enemy team is going to go based on that situation it, that is something that really sets good Dominion players from, you know, the decent Dominion players. And just being able to react accordingly and making the right choices, because it's all split second. You don't have a lot of time to think about stuff. You can't say, oh, let's go for a tower because they're taking Dragon. It's, it's really, we need to do something right now because they are pushing our top lane and we're kind of really out of position for this. You know, that dynamic still exists though. Oh, I'm taking a tower. Let's go get Dragon. Oh, they might be, have three people coming out of the base going towards top point. And instead of you being two people coming out of your base and trying to fight them 3v2, you might want to just go to their bottom point and pressure on a 3v1. Those kind of dynamics, those little trades that you can make, you really have to think and realize that they are an option in Dominion because people don't readily do them. It might not always be the best decision to go fight a 3v3 top if you're already a place on the map and closer to a different point. Yeah, and this is very true. Those are the decisions we see being made on, on this screen right now, some of those th things that you can look for. Alright, and as we get into it, it looks like Edriel is going to go for that tier start again. And, uh... Oh, this is going to be a crazy top lane fight. It's really going to come down to these AoE mages. On who is going to be taking this. The Ezreal doing his little poking thing, he opted for a tier. We see Urgot being bottom and Ash being top, which I think is very good. I think this is a fine decision. I think Urgot is a much uh, better intestine matchup against Garner. But the Alistar is taking a lot of damage, and the Pantheon opted for a no boot start. He is poking the Vi over here for Brutalizer, but he is very, very squishy and should be the first target to go down in these fights if Tools is very focused. Yeah, Pantheon is someone you do not want to leave up, especially as the team fights start getting a little bit farther in because as you get low on HP, Ooh, his crit starts to go through. From Alistar completely whipping, the Pantheon getting engaged on Bibipop, doing a significant amount of damage to him. We see the Cassio opting to try to get the cap, 
as she being the main damage dealer, not participating in this fight, a lot of her team is low, but the Ash is on the side, and we still have very, very, very good folk coming out from blue team, but we need the Cassio to, you know, a little bit closer. They're still poking them down very, very well, but they very much still can end this fight. As you see the Pantheon jump in, take out Hafe. Ash is just chilling around in the back line, could have went in, but they're still pretty much going even in these fights. We did have the brand immediately pop his revive. Braum, dancing around with giving Eric on the side, they're going to get a very, very good uh, WQ combo as the poke is still going. Brand is going to get up to this fight, and the Pantheon did not to revive, so... We'll see what ends up going down. And BB Pop coming really close with that punch, chasing that cow away. It looks like they're going to try to channel this point back, but cow getting back in. Uh, can they get this point back? They do have... They don't quite have the numbers advantage, but they do have the poke. So if Ash could get a really good volley off... Ooh, that... Oh, oh the double flash coming in. Very nice read there by the Ash, knowing that the flash Q was coming in. Meanwhile, we have Urgot getting the neutral on the bot lane. I really believe that that Cassio made a very, very interesting decision. She went 1.Q, 1.W, 3 points in E, and did not twin thing a single time that fight up top. If she had put more points in Q, and went for the Q Cassio build because she's top lane, they would have easily taken that encounter. I think that was a, a decision that she made thinking that they were going to fight, but then opted not to as you see the Pantheon jump on the bot, in the bot lane, get the stun off and blow the exhaust, but... I don't think Bibipop will be going down here today, and Wolf are hitting level 6 is going to put Pantheon on oh, laser. that poor Pantheon. Down. Urgot being choose. Oom with a blade, though, and Ganaric only having a tier. Ganaric being very, very careful, trying to fight this thing. All he has to do is keep it here and wait for his team to come around, and he'll be perfectly good to go. He did get hit with the corrosive charge. He is just going to walk away now, and I think opposite for news is too slow to get away with CC. Cape flash in and get the stun. Very nice pillar into Q there. He is going to be able to catch that, and that is going to be a dead god. As uh, Israel just backs off because he's too low to participate in the fight. Throwing out well, a few that shots. That was happening, too. however. Blue team did get the cap pretty much uncontested on the top lane. They had more members up there, so we, they were just able to get it. You have Parkers with the Storm Shield running around Big and Braum. They can't really put too much pressure as uh, two melees on these two range right now. They don't have enough damage, and the turret is too close. And Bran, getting the stun on Pantheon, getting a very, very nice ultimate. Pantheon Ooh. flashing out, didn't know what was in, in the brushes anymore since he left them. He's probably just going to opt to go back to base and use his ultimate on top lane. That However, was a Kulis, very good use of that Brand ult, though. Kulis is very aware that Pantheon is really not able to do anything right now, and they are pressuring as hard as they can, but if they cannot get a fight before Pantheon decides to come up here, it's going to be pretty bad. We see Alistar going in, being a very, very big distraction. Pantheon out being channeled. Ash is on the side right now, as you see a Parker is going to go down taking many turret shots, and Bibipop is in quite an interesting predicament, still wants to particularly fight this. Alistar on the side, zoning out the Ezreal. We have Bibipop getting caught by all the members of Lucy, and he's going to opt to go down. Brand's still doing some good amounts of damage. Alistar looks like he's going to solo up Ganaric on the side. Wolfer are running up from the bot lane, which is probably why Clueless is trying to stall for so long, but I don't think he's going to be very effective here. Now he's going to go in on this cow. He should be able to... Oh, the headbutt coming across. Able to take out Generic. Man, it is going to be very hard for them to dive in Ash, just firing out volleys into their face there. And this is why Ash is a particularly bad champion. You opted to get an Alistar. It's a champion that can really protect the backline. While well, we see Wolfer casually walking up to it because the support for it is not currently there. We have an Exhaust going out. Stun going down from Pantheon. But Wolfer are going to buy the ult. They're going to get the stun and the Wombo combo. Pantheon's going to go down. And this top lane is going to be definitely clueless. Excellent team play there. Wolfer not pulling him too far, just inside the range of the pillar, still able to line him up perfectly for that stun, taking him down. Uh, opposite for noobs on that, Urgot did have to pop his revive down there, just to defend that bot point from the 2v1. So, let's see if Braum is going to decide to stick around or just head off here. Well, we have a moment. We can talk about the builds. We see Poppy Seed Oil going for Blasting 1 and an Amptome. That can either turn into a cap or a Void Staff. A very early Void Staff would... Uh, with runes allow for near true damage, we see the Alistar get the wrap around on Generic though, he is going to opt to stall pretty much for as long as possible, he's not getting away as Ezreal is much, much too slow. And it is going to give Clueless a decent amount of jungle control, and with that jungle control you see Bibipop, he's going to opt to gank bottom lane since he had vision on everybody else on the map, and opposite for noobs is going to go down. This is a very good rotation by Clueless because they know that blue team is going to opt to go top. 
Pace, however, should have hit the bailout button. He is going to go down because of this decision. Yeah, he decided to stay up top to try and defend it. Being that martyr for his team, going to try to stall, is not going to be able to get too much done there. And uh, it's going to be kind of hard for them to get the spot point. Let's see, Skarner's here to back him up. It is only Ash Lewis, in that 1v3. Lewis with the Monte Cristo rotation, they're definitely going to get the bot point, which was Quest. So this is a very, very good trade on their part. They might also get the Ash because Braum slow is very, very strong, along with Wolfer getting the stun from Braum and the stun from his own auto attack passes. We have Pantheon, however, with Alistar trying to push this Ezreal off a point and get the cap. And Ezreal taking a lot of damage. This Mukau only has a Sheen and a lot of bulk, but he can still deal out quite a bit. I think a lot of people underestimate Mukau's damage when uh, he starts to just only having, you know, that Sheen, that extra auto attack afterwards. Meanwhile, we have Clueless getting stuck between a rock and a hard place, trying to put down a lot of pressure on the midpoint, even though the top point's still capped. He had Ash and Cassio push them off the point. We have Urgot now catching the Brown on in the jungle. And it looks like they are boxing as the Al Alistar should be able to get Parker's here with relative ease, but Pantheon gonna find Vi on the other side, but he's by himself. He's gonna get destroyed even though he had the storm buff. We have Hape walking in, in the four people right now. The Ergot still wants to fight because he knows they have the advantage right now, but his team was definitely not on the same page. Vi's gonna go out, and two members from the blue team are gonna go down. SEO is the only one left open, and Wolfer is still running a rampage, just capping around the map. Yeah, and this Ezreal does have his Muramana finished, so we are at that 8 minute point, his damage is spiking. So it's going to be very dangerous for the, him, them to just leave him sitting in the back. Uh, if he's have... able to sit out there and throw those cues, it is going to be very dangerous. He had Ash getting caught and the Alistar still caught in between three people getting stunned up by Brand. Purple team managing to get the opponent using opposing team's mid as Pantheon is looking to ult on all three of them. Ash here also being thrown out, Parker's blowing heal. Pantheon opting to jump on the Wolfer, who might get out of here, but the slows to match are coming in. The swap comes down on Hafe Hardy, so both of them are looking like they're going to fall. And they are going to go down. Cassiopeia building that Rylice to get that extra slow. Parker's going to get taken out. That shield d doing a lot of DR, but just not enough. Hafe going to try to stall for as long as he can, trying to get away here. It's going to come down to a good EQ. Oh, the slows are coming out from Cassiopeia and Urgot, and that is going to be a dead brand. Now, with those good rotations from Clueless, this game is looking very good for them. However, it's still a relatively even game. You have kills uh, pretty even on both sides. You have items still getting uh, very good development. And everybody's around the same level. So the game is much closer than it may have seemed in the past three minutes. Yeah, it is very important to note that because Clueless did that rotation bot, they gave up the top, they kept their mid, and they were keeping the three points. You don't need to have, you know, the top point all the time. You just need to have more than your opponent. But right now we see another fight bringing out his poppy seed oil on the Cassio has Bibapop caught between a rock and a hard place. Steel has brush vision and the Alistar gonna make sure he stays there and he's gonna get that Vi and see the Cassio with the Rallys is very very scary as anything that it touches it really can't get away and Generic doesn't really have a good means of walking up to it. The Brand is, seems like he's gonna try to flank it down. The Alistar gonna try to get the Braum before that happens. Got the headbutt combo onto the Ezreal but we have a lot of zoning going out in all different directions. The Alistar Ooh, is going to go down. Pop's going to come in, find the ass with the flank on the wrong side of that fight. The Braum all gets thrown down on the Pantheon, and the Cassio finds herself in a very precarious position and is probably going to go down. Now that Braum hopping in to help Vi is going to be able to lock that down. Very nice positioning, all of them staying alive for the rest of that fight. And meanwhile, in the bot lane, I believe Wolfer did actually win that fight against Urgot. Urgot having to pop that revive to get back down and keep his point covered. Mukau is down to give some support. Let's see if they can manage to get a kill on this. Oh, just barely missing that Pulverize. But Pantheon mm -hmm. is down here as well. We see two members of Clueless making the rotation. Hafe stopping to get the Storm buff. I don't. I think that's very ill-advised. His support is needed immediately. But it is going to come down late, and we'll see what ends up happening because of it. Point is going to be nearly capped here. Let's see if that storm buff was a good stop. Is he going to have a chance to use it right now? And we see a flank coming on by Clueless, still having map pressure on the other side. They're going to get this Ash because she's out of position and by herself once again. Very important when you're playing an AD carry to not be alone. And the fight breaking out bottom lane, it looks like Blue Team is going to clean up the members of Clueless filming around the jungle. Uh, Hape opted for that relic, just didn't help him out in that fight. There was too much damage for him to try to deal with alone with Vi, and uh, they were able to clean them up quite handily. Vi popping the revive is going to get the flank on Urgot. Meanwhile, we see Pantheon is going to jump on the Ezreal and the Braum at top, and the Alistar is going to come to support, so this will be a 3v2, and the Braum might see himself going down. Uh, Braum's going to try to get away. Oh, another really close Pulverize. Almost we see Blue Team not taking a target, and they're not going to get anything off of them, either one of them. 
Yeah, as we're opting for the be. recall and Have down bottom with Wolfer capping. The map pressure from Clueless is just pulling Blue Team. They are dictating the pace of this game. They are telling Blue Team that you're going to come over here and try to stop us. And we're going to already be ready for it. And we already have the other people where they need to be. We have Poppy Seed Oil on the Cassiel trying to zone out everybody. Ganeri finally getting combo, but he is just with his frozen fist going to kite it out. And Braum, being the tank that he is, is going to whiff an ult. <laughs> but he's gonna live. Cassio right. won't be thrown out on only the Vi who got knocked back. And Clueless trying to pressure this point, but they're trying to walk through a lot of things to do so. Pantheon found himself a little bit too close, gets stunned up on the turret. He's probably gonna go down. But Parker's is gonna go down first, and the Alistar pops his heal, pops everything. Cassio 1v1 the Ezreal. But they stacked up on the brand, doesn't matter. The Cassio's gonna go in very, very hard, gets the level up, and they're gonna be able to defend this point. Very nicely done. They did manage to hold it off. Meanwhile, while that was going on, Wolfer again took bot lane and then was able to neutralize the mid. This Urgot pick is just really not working out against Wolfer. Wolfer going for his uh, his favorite item, that Trinity Force, as well as a Hydra on Skarner. Very interesting build, but uh, it seems to be paying off quite a bit for him. Skarner is a champion that is just a massive base stats, and he has levels on this Urgot. There gets level 13. Skarner is almost level 15. And he hit his power spike with his items, he's just going to run over it, and the Urgot has been misplaying kind of in the bot lane. Wolf are literally walking up to him, grabbing him, and just beating him down because he beats him in a man fight. And Ash looking to try and get some positioning here. Throwing out that Hawkshot is going to be able to reveal the area. Blue team has captured the quarry. Trying to make sure there isn't a lurking Skarner. Oh, but Skarner getting in on the Cassiopeia is going to be able to get that. I think he stopped her ult. No, no, her ult was not up yet. I thought I saw a scream going the out there. The fire being blown by the Cassio, the Ash is going to go down. It looks like Foolis are going to also take down the Urgot. Meanwhile, top lane, the 2v2 going in favor of Foolis once again as the Alistar has to back away. Yeah, he is going to blow his ult because, and the bait out the Braum ult because Parker is greeting for this Alistar kill and the Cassio is going to come up. Beautiful brand ult, oh, another my perfect goodness. brand ult that is going to win another fight. And this is why Brand is so strong in Dominion. He has those team fights. Everyone is grouped for a majority of it. Able to just throw out those ults and get every bounce. So nicely done. The AoE damage coming out. We see a lot of Lair CC on the turret, but Haven's still taking the turret. Braum with the popping the lock of the Iron Solar, giving his AP the shield, but he is still going to go down. And it looks like they're both going to fall, but Clueless again with the rotations, knowing Blue Team has to come out and respond to them at their mid. They're going to take Quest again in the bottom lane, which is beautiful objective control coming from Clueless right now. Yeah, Dominion again, playing like that game of chess, you never want to be playing the reactionary game. You want to be making the moves and forcing your opponent to react. That is exactly what Clueless is doing, and they're playing it beautifully. Ash getting caught out. Pantheon was trying to wait and bait something in, but they did not know the Vi was on the other side of the wall. It is going to take both of them down in that 3v2 there. It's very good to note that Generic also went for a Frozen Fist this game. That is, very, that is enabling, to get, enabling them to get a lot of picks, as their champions really, really need help getting in. They have a Skarner and they have a Vi. When Vi doesn't have ult, she only has punch. And we see this fight breaking out literally in front of Blue Team's face as Vi flashes out to go for the Volt Breaker charge and not be damaged by the Cassio. They're going to end up trading Skarner for Urgot and Ganeric is just going to opt to run away with his Frozen Fist and it looks like he might get there. Rom's capping the top away. point, so if Clueless can hold this, they've definitely got a 5 cap in the game line. Yeah, the game is looking to be very close here. No one is capping that bottom point for Abusement Park. And uh, this 5 cap again, the points are just going to start ticking down 5 at a time. So it is a lot of points to be losing, especially when it's this low. The objective control on the quest, losing 20 points every time you lose a quest is huge. And it looks like Parker's is going to try to man mode the Pantheon, but the game is going to be over. A much better showing by the blue team. And the second time around, it was just... This is what happens when you play when you've played more Dominion and you have that experience and you can rotate around the map. The the champion picks were much, much more even. The builds are much better from each team. As you see the Cassio going nine, three, and five. Did very, very well and a lot of work for their team, but it just wasn't enough as they just didn't have the map rotations that they needed. Yeah, they did pick a great team comp this time, much better than the last one. But then when you start getting even in comps and you realize that team fights could just go either way, the next advantage you have to play is we need to use our mobility, we need to get around the map, we need to start picking different locations to hit them instead of just going 
for top lane all the time. Blizzard did an excellent job of that. They would send a bunch of people bot, they would get that bot point, then when Abusement would try to, you know, send extra forces down to get bot, Blizzard said, okay, we're just going to go right back up and take top. Don't always have to have top. You just need to hold more points than your opponent. Checking out that damage dealt graph there. Brand, whew, skyrocketing to the top. We saw a lot of really, really good brand ults from Hafe that game. Just absolutely destroying people with it. And then Ezreal, as we talked about that first game, his damage wasn't very high because he opted for that Muramana. When that Muramana gets finished, that damage spike is incredible. He managed to hit up to 24k damage that game, all thanks to that build. Doing a great job kiting around for his team, getting those extra slows out. So, great, great stuff. Alright, and uh, that was game two, or round two rather, for those guys. So I think up next we have our finals match. And if I am guessing through the brackets correctly, it is going to be Team Killing Dominion versus Clueless. So we will get into that in just a second. But before we go, I do have to show you guys this awesome stuff we have going. Azubu, thanks to them for hosting this tournament. They are also doing a giveaway for you guys. If you guys want to win a Razor Mousepad signed by Curse. This is signed by Voiboy, Saint, Cop, Nijacky, and Liquid whole bunch of Curse members. It's really, really cool. Curse does a lot of great stuff for the community, and just in general, they do a lot of great things. Um, Azubu is giving away a mouse pad signed by them. All the information you need is on this site. Again, if I could get someone to just link it in chat for you guys, you can rock it. Um, you just have to do one of these things below. Each one will give you a better chance of winning. If you don't win the mouse pad, there is also a chance to win a Teemo hat or a Ramus hat. And those are pretty awesome, I have to say. I have a team I had of my, uh, myself. It's really, really fun to like wear around at league events and stuff. It's really, really cool. Um, there's only eight days left, so make sure you guys get in on this soon. And with that, we will be getting in to our finals match in just a second. <laughs> 